Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Tundra Mission. Hey, I'm out here cruising around in the Toyota Tundra, and I got to thinking, you know, I should get on and make a video about what it's like driving a full-size Tundra as opposed to a Tacoma, let's say. What's the difference? What can you expect? You know, maybe you're in the market, you're teetering, maybe you've had a Tacoma, for instance, or a mid-size truck for a while, and you're thinking about making the leap going ahead and getting a full-size Toyota Tundra. So I thought I'd kind of let you guys know my impressions of what it's like jumping back and forth because I have the Tacoma as well and the Toyota Tundra. First of all, let's talk about the obvious. I mean, it is a full-size truck and the Toyota Tundra is a massive full-size truck. This thing is gigantic. It won't fit in my garage, at least the left part of my garage. I think I could squeeze it in the right side. So you have to consider that. If you're thinking you're gonna garage your new Tundra, maybe you live in an area that gets winter weather, it's really cold, you don't wanna deal with ice and snow and all that junk, or even just downpours of rain when you're getting up at seven o'clock in the morning or whatever to go to that brick and mortar job. You have to kind of take it home and make sure that it fits. I did that once a long time ago when I was looking at my first Tundra, and this would have been the, uh, I think it was the first, it would have been the first generation. I brought it home and it hung out of my garage about three feet. Well, that was a deal breaker for me because I did live in a climate where it was cold in the winter, snow, ice, all that nasty stuff. And I didn't want to have to be out before I went to work scraping my truck or shoveling snow off of it. So that 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 killed it for me. I didn't do it because of that. So something to consider. Um, hauling capacity, another obvious thing. The Tundra is bigger. It has a bigger bed. You're going to be able to haul more stuff back there in the back. That might be important if you use it for business or maybe you haul a lot of stuff. You're going to have to make less trips. Maybe you'll burn a little bit less gas, right? On the interior, uh, hauling capacity as far as people. Well, obviously, you're going to be able to haul more people in here, at least more comfortably. I mean, I could haul five adults in here, I think, without any issue. And I don't think anybody we would be complaining. It's just cavernous in here. One of the things that I've always loved about the Toyota Tundra, you never feel conf confined in here. I've never had complaints from anybody in any of my Tundras about being able to fit on the inside. It's just great if you have a lot of people, maybe you've got a couple of kids, the wife, the husband, and you wanna fit everybody, perfect. And that makes it nice to take longer distance trips in as well. I've done that, I've driven a Tundra from all the way from Ohio to deep South Texas and back. And it was one of the, if not most comfortable rides I've ever driven in for long distance trips. The only downside of course is fuel economy, especially if you have an older or late generation or the previous model Tundra, it's gonna cost you a bit more, but what's comfort worth? You don't have to listen to anybody complaining about not having enough room or not, not having enough space in the Toyota Tundra. Um, the size, back to the size. Of course, when you go from a mid-size truck like the Tacoma to the Tundra, you're gonna have to be a little bit more mindful, I think, when you're on the road. That's one of the things that I love about the Tundra is that it's easy to place on the road. I've had other trucks and it's not the same. And I think it's because of the design of the front end, what you're looking over when you're driving the truck around. It makes it feel the way that they have it set up, like you're driving something smaller than what you really are. It makes it easy to place on the road next to the lines, hopefully you're paying attention to these things, while not being too close to the other side. I don't know what it is about it. I think it's the way that Toyota designs the hood, particularly in this one. We kind of have some V stamping in the hood, if you will, where it's a little higher on the sides and flat in the middle. So it kind of points you the way that you should be going. And it definitely makes it a lot less stressful, I think, if you're not used to driving big vehicles on the road. And I know there's a lot of people that are afraid of the Tundra because of that. They don't want something that they think is gonna to be too big that they can't handle. Go test drive one, I'm here to tell you. 
you'll be amazed at how much smaller the truck feels from a driver's perspective out of the windshield than it really is. Technology, it's on par with pretty much everything else out there. I will say it's not the flashiest thing. I've had other trucks like a Ram Rebel that was really several years ago. And I would say that version was a heck of a lot flashier than what you get in the Toyota Tundra. It's more utilitarian feeling. Doesn't have all of the bling and gadgets and colors and trims and all that stuff on the inside. It's really pretty simple, which makes it pretty nice. It makes it intuitive. You know where everything is. It's easy to get adapted to driving this truck. I mean, I go back and forth between a Tacoma, a Toyota Prius, the new one, which by the way, has all kinds of gadgets and things in it. But I can jump back in this truck and know where everything is. It's not like I'm struggling to try to remember how to change the radio station or turn the volume down or anything like that. They made it very intuitive and it's one of the things that I really love about the Tundra is that it's simple to use. And also along those same lines, they didn't change it so much from the previous generation, if maybe you've had one of those, that you won't know or everything will be completely different when you go to this current generation. It's awesome. Now, we do have to talk about fuel economy. You know, one of the big uh, probably misconceptions is that we were gonna have this really great fuel economy in this redesigned, uh, turbo six twin turbo six tundra and i'm finding that to not be true you know right now as i look at the gauge as i'm driving around and mostly 55 to 60 mile an hour speeds with some lower speeds thrown in i'm getting 14.6 miles per gallon now that is a bit better than i was getting in the previous generation big honk and v8 but it's not a lot better you know I, Maybe on the freeway, this'll, this'll be a little bit higher than it is and what I'm experiencing right now, we shall see. Uh, I don't do a lot of freeway driving right now, but I'm going to at some point next year, take a long trip in this truck. Uh, so we're gonna find out when I do that, if indeed some prolonged higher speed driving will increase the fuel economy. I don't know, eh, we, we shall see. The last thing that I'm gonna mention in this truck, and this is really the only downside, I guess, in going to the Tundra, made this generation from the previous, is auto stop. We have auto stop in this truck, but Toyota did do something to make it better. I have found that when I stop, if you're not familiar with auto stop, it's when the truck shuts down when you stop the truck. But when I pull up to a stoplight, for instance, it does not activate. Instead, I get a message on the dash that says to activate auto stop, press harder on the brake. Well, I don't want to activate auto stop, so I don't press harder on the brake. It's kind of a, a way for you to not use auto stop, but Toyota to still have it in the truck. And kudos to them for doing it this way. I mean, there is a button over there that you can push that will disable it. You have to do that every time you restart the truck. I never remember to do it, but I find that it's not an issue for me because I don't push the brake so hard that it activates anyway. Love the way that they have that set up. Anyway, I just wanted to get on, kind of give you my impressions. You know, what's it like to drive a full-size Toyota Tundra? Maybe what you can expect if you're in the market. Maybe you haven't had one, you're driving a mid-size truck, or maybe it's been a while since you've been in the new, or been in it. And maybe it's, or maybe it's been a while since you've been in a full-size Tundra. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think if you've recently gone from mid-size to full-size. I'd be curious to know. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.